Um, my name is Feng Li from School of Statistics and Mathematics at the Central University of Finance Economics. And today I'm going to talk about distributed forecasting with large Bayesian VAR models. Yeah, welcome to follow me on Twitter. Uh, this is joint work with three of our co-authors. First one is Xiao Wenma, is my master student. And uh, Sunil Kassin is a professor from Erbil University in Sweden. Uh, professor Yan Fei Kang is from Beihang University. The outline of this talk, uh, uh, first I'm going to talk about distributed forecasting with ultra-long time series. Then I will introduce a technique called least square approximation and we implement it for a distributed system. Then we introduce the distributed Bayesian VAR models. And in the end, we provide an example with electricity demand data forecasting. First, uh, distributed forecasting with ultra-long time series is very important because uh, currently ultra-long time series are increasingly accumulated in many cases. For example, hourly electricity demands or daily maximum temperature or streaming data generated in real time. But forecasting ultra-long time series is still challenging because time series are distributed, uh, stored with a distributed file system. And the training Bayesian models is very time consuming. And uh, in real data, the model updating is a demand for streaming time series. Also, ultra-long time series require uh, ultra-long forecast. Uh, historically, uh, traditional time series models are usually assumed with stationary assumptions. This is, uh, seems not so realistic with ultra-long time series. Um, there are very few attempts um, by applying Bayesian models to the industrial standard distributed computing systems. Uh, that makes forecasters couldn't take advantage of probabilistic forecasting and also make it difficult for inventory planning in business. We will show you an example with electricity load data. This is not extremely long time series, but it's pretty often uh, unrealistic. The electricity load data consists of 10 different time series of hourly, uh, ranging from March 1st. 2003 to April uh, 2017, spanning about 124 time points, uh, thousand times points. The forecast horizon is at least one month ahead to allow for earlier management plans. However, for a distributed system, forecasting is not uh, as simple as a single machine workflow because the file is stored in the HDFS, that is Hadoop Distributed File System, one has to partition the data sequentially into sub-blocks. Then applying this MapReduce technique for each sub-model with different parameters. In the end, with the reducer, one has to combine all the estimators in the end to make each step forecast and to make the output, final output. And then we will introduce a technique called least square approximations. Assume we have a function L that is uh, twice differentiable. Uh, you can think F is a loss function. We can define a global loss function for individual basis. And um, uh, we obtain its global optimizer we call it theta tilt. Of course, if you have data is a global uh, distributed start, we couldn't get the true value of a seat because we didn't, we didn't have that big machine. One thing way to do this is that we could decompose the global loss function using Taylor expansions so that global loss function is partitioned into small blocks and for each block that is a quadratic form. The quadratic form should be a good local approximation for local data and if you put them together, that is good approximation for the global loss function. And this is verified by Wang and Lin in the 2007 JASA paper. And this leads to uh, the following least square objective function. 
so that we can define a objective function just based on this least squares with multiple machines. And this result is available for regression types of models and uh, it is recently published in the JCGS paper. We want to use this technique and extend it to Bayesian framework. So we will first consider general VAR model and written in the terms of regression type. In the VAR model, you have some response variables and some lag dependence and some covariates. In the end, you will find this linear representation. So we make it a Bayesian. So put a prior on our unknown parameters for the gamma that is coefficients and the psi. Uh, to make things simple, we take a uniform prior for gamma and the Jeffreys prior for psi. So the prior joint prior distribution would be like this. And of course, our result can be extended to other priors. With these settings, we know that gamma now follows the multivariate normal distribution conditional on psi and psi follows the inverse V-sharp distribution. And the gamma now is a multivariate T-distribution uh, with uh, position matrix and degrees of freedom uh, for the posterior. Now we can get the posterior expectation and posterior variance for this VAR model. In this way, we could directly work out the posterior expectation and covariance matrix of the coefficients for the different subsets, and then the master machine could calculate the global estimate uh, for gamma cubed using our method we call it DLSC. And so the vector form of gamma now could be uh, with this close form. This is very useful because it reduces the Bayesian computation. You can update subchunks of the data and the in the end, the ensemble or the estimators. The distributed Bayesian model can also be updated because we could apply the yesterday prior to the yesterday's posterior to this prior, and uh, that is easily uh, applied that the variance and the theta uh, is estimated with this updating technique. Therefore, we could constantly update the expectation of the unknown parameter based on the initial value or our historical data when new accumulated data is arriving. We apply our result with electricity demand data. Here you will see a few descriptions of the variables and um, we use different metrics to measure the forecast performance. First one is point MSE or maze and then the log predict score which is commonly used in uh, density prediction. Uh, first we use a big machine to put everything into same memory and uh, run the model with different forecasting horizons. Uh, there is a, we treat those as benchmarks. Then we partition the data into different chunks. First with 5 or 10 or 15. We notice that when we increase the number of chunks, the forecast performance actually in, increased and improved. This uh, validates our uh, previous hypothesis that when we assume a global stationary assumption to a VAR model is not really realistic. However, we could always use a lot of local models and put them together. And we could even update forecast horizon with 700. And this is much mm, efficient compared to running one single model. So in the end, we would like to offer you a few discussions. First one is that distributed forecasting not only speeds up the computation, but also improves the forecasting performance. This is verified with our working paper on archive. And uh, in all days, distributed systems like Apache Spark are the de facto standard in data science industry. But it is really costly to run time-consuming programs, especially like um, Bayesian models. If we could have efficient ensembles to make all those sub-models uh, work together in the end, that would be greatly improve the 
uh, usability of our Bayesian forecasting models. And then uh, scalable Bayesian forecast models really empower the rapid business planning. And uh, there's a big demand in business, we've noticed. If you are interested in theoretical details, you are welcome to look at our papers, for example, the uh, distributed least square approximations by me and my co-authors appeared in JCGS. And uh, for this paper, distributed bar models, it will be soon on archive. We also have a distributed ARIMA model, it is already on archive. If you know how to implement, how to run program on Spark distributed system, you can try our software on GitHub. Okay, thank you. You are welcome to visit my lab and uh, contact me with email address. Here is um, a short list of references you might be interested. And thank you.